Second Thessalonians. Okay, we we'll read Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three and four. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three and four. The Bible says, "Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth." And exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. God bless you. Let's take our seats. Right. From Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, we have just read here about a man. Uh, you, if you are able to, you can read the rest of the chapter at home. It's speaking about Satan, right? You can read the, the, the rest of the chapter at home. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, right? Verse 3 and 4, as we have said, uh, it's already telling us about this man here. Maybe I can just repeat. It says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except they come first a falling away. And the men of sin be revealed, the son of of perdition, who opposeth. Now, I want you to take note of verse, verse 4 very closely. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Look at this fellow here. He exalts himself and opposes hmm, everything. He says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. Look where he's doing this thing, right in the temple. Now, if you remember, as we, uh, we've been, uh, uh, rather as we started our subject uh, on the fifth dimension, uh, the third, the third uh, uh, region, uh, which is the throne of Satan, we read um, Isaiah chapter 14, and in Isaiah chapter 14, we saw how Lucifer, the son of the morning, which is Satan, how he wanted to exalt himself above the stars of God, and he wanted to establish a kingdom which was even better than Michael, Michael the Lord Jesus Christ. And we understand that this Lucifer, he was so proud, you know, until he, he, he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be worshipped just like God. Now, You'd understand that if he wanted to be worshipped just like God, he would not entirely come and, you know, uh, 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 criticize or just say everything that God is saying is wrong. He would just come and twist it just a little bit. You see, like what he did in the Garden of Eden. Now, if you remember in the Garden of Eden when he was talking to Eve, he did not come and take away everything that God said. He just twisted a little bit. Now, the Bible says... Men shall not live by uh, bread alone, but by every word, every word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth or proceedeth out of the mouth. Because proceedeth, it means continuously proceeding out of the mouth of God. Now, so what he does, he tries to take a part of the word away or he tries to add to the word of God. You see what he does. So this has always been in his nature. And you'd, you'd, you'd remember that in the Garden of Eden, he came and he says, no, you will not die. When God had said, the day you shall eat the fruit of the tree, you shall what? Surely die. But when Satan, he comes in, incarnated in a, in a serpent, uh, or when he was inside the serpent, when we are saying incarnated, we are simply saying that he was in that, in that serpent. So he was operating fully inside the serpent. You understand? That's what incarnation means, right? So he was incarnated in the serpent and then he started to say, well, you shall not die. The only thing he just added, when God said you shall die, he said you shall not die. He only added one word, three letter word, simple as that. That's what brought all humanity and creation and everything else into chaos, you see. So we are supposed to take fully what God said in his word. Don't add, don't subtract. I think it's revelation that says, whoever will add the wrath of God 
will be added upon him, or the plagues or curses of God will be added upon him. Whoever takes away, his name will be taken away as well out of the book of life. So you mustn't add or subtract to the word of God, you see. Right. So what does Satan do? Satan, because he's trying to take the place of God. Remember, the battle, it started where? In heaven. And then Satan was thrown where? He was thrown to, uh, uh, into hell. Now in hell, he also established his little kingdom. He was practicing how he was going to you know, take over God's domain here on earth. He was practicing how he was going to take over and control God's children. So in hell, he was busy putting all his weapons in order, all his tools in order and training, uh, and, and training his uh, 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 his associates, his subjects, the demons, the fallen angel, because when he, fallen angels, because when he was cast out of heaven, he took with him a third of the angels. Ne? He took with him a third of the angels. Now, the, let's say, let's say I'm giving an example because there are many, many. I don't know, maybe millions or billions. I don't know. Maybe I think maybe. I don't know, maybe over billions angels that are there. Ne? There are a lot of them. Right. So what does Satan does? I don't know the number. Remember that. But there are too many. I think it was, uh, is it Elisha or Elijah who at one point he actually uh, 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 prayed. It was Elisha when he was with the, the young man. Uh, I, I, I think it was uh, Gehazi. And then he said, he prayed to say, God open his eyes that he could see because he had seen the enemies coming to destroy them. And it was Elisha. He prayed to say, God open his eyes, open his eyes that, you know, he might see, you know, that those that we have, they are more than the enemies. When Gehazi's spiritual eyes were open, you know, he started to see innumerable. He could not count the angels that he saw. They were all over the hills. Everywhere he was looking, they were there. You understand? So there were a lot of them. Right? So when Satan was cast down, let's just say there were ten. If we are saying a third of ten, that's about three point something. So we are saying it's about three. If it's a hundred, it's about thirty-three. If it's a thousand, that's three hundred and thirty-three. So let's say maybe there were a million angels. That means 333,000 were taken by the devil. You understand that? So you can see the, 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 the great impact of influence which he had when he was there in heaven. The numbers that he deceived right there in heaven. He deceived the angels that were standing before God, worshipping God, that saw God. Angels that saw the supernatural things which you and I maybe have not seen physically. He deceived them. Now imagine if he was able to deceive the angels in heaven. What kind of chaos can he create here on earth? You see how sincere we are to be. Right. So what does he do? After he deceives there in heaven, he's thrown into hell. And then in hell, he's busy, you know, planning and things like that. Then he starts to launch his operation here on earth. You see that? But remember, we said heaven and, he- heaven and hell, they are all here on earth. They are not somewhere, you know, in a different place or something of that nature. They are right here on earth. So what does he do? He changes dimensions, he comes to here to, to this earthly dimension, then he starts to uh, uh, establish his own little kingdom here on earth. You understand that? So, what happens? You'd find that uh, 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 you'd find that um, if you go back, maybe let's say to, 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 to the Garden of Eden, God had created himself or God had established himself a little paradise, his Eden here on earth. It took God 6,000 years to create his Eden. You understand that? Because in the book of Psalms and in the book of Peter, the Bible says one day to God is like 1,000 years to to us, mankind. So the Bible says he created, you know, the heavens and the earth in how many days? Six days. 
and then on the seventh day he rested. So it took God, not that you know it really took him, but he wanted to take that amount of time. He could have done it in a split second, you understand, but he wanted to establish it in that time. So it took God six days or 6,000 years to establish his own Eden, you understand? Right, so what does, what does the enemy do? When Satan now, I think there's a scripture that says, Woe unto you, earth, for the, for the devil has, is, is, is cast upon thee or something like that. So what does Satan do? For the past 6,000 years, Satan has also been establishing his own little kingdom here on earth. He has been establishing his own Eden. That is why Brother Branham, he comes and he preaches a sermon entitled Satan's Eden. Because Satan is establishing his own garden of Eden. You understand? But it's now a perverted Eden. Because God had created a perfect, beautiful, original Eden. Now Satan, he comes and is trying to tarnish, he's trying to destroy what God has been establishing. But remember, we say, when we are talking about these things, I think it was last week when we were saying, or, or maybe a few weeks back, when we were saying that all these things that are happening, they are coming to be crowned to something. They are coming to be fulfilled and to, to, to have like a, a high mark on something. The, the, great, the greater purpose that the enemy has got. It's not just for him to sit in hell, you know, all these thousands of years and wait for him to be thrown in the lake of fire because he's going to be destroyed. Hell and everything in hell is going to be thrown in the lake of fire. The purpose of the enemy is not just waiting to say, I'm waiting for my destruction in hell. No, he's trying also to take as many as he can. You see that? So how does he do it? The same way that he did it in heaven when he, established, when, when he was trying to establish his little kingdom, exalting himself above God and things like that, and then he was cast out you know, with the third of the angels and things like that from heaven, is the same thing that he's also doing here on earth. Because in hell, everything in hell, it already belongs to him. So his, his, his priority, his main purpose is not to deceive people in hell. Those that are in hell, they're already in hell. You understand that? So his target is people that we've got here. And the people that we've got here, remember, he has already been operating here on earth. So his great target, that's why the Bible uh, in the book of Thessalonians, it speaks about him, you know, in the temple of God. So where is he operating now? He's no longer just operating in the world. He's already done with the world. He knows that the world already belongs to him. You understand that? Where is he trying to establish his little kingdom? Right in the church. Right among us, the sons and daughters of God. You see what has, always, what has always been. You see, so when God does, when Satan rather, excuse me, when Satan does this, this great de 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 deception that he has been trying to establish over the years, you'd find that the best way for him to do it he comes to the temple. I, I wanted to read something uh, for you in a sermon called um, Satan's Eden, um, preached in 1965, 29 August 1965. Brother Branham, he says, quotation 27, that deceitfulness of the church of today. See, the son of perdition. Now, Brother Branham had just finished reading 2 Thessalonians, the part that I, I, I read for you, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So Brother Branham read that one, and then he continued here at quotation 27. You are just continuing. And then he says, that deceitfulness of the church of today, the church of when? Today. See, the son of perdition, the devil, the son of perdition, the devil, then people worshipping Satan in this day, People worshipping Satan in this day, thinking they are worshipping God. People worshipping Satan, thinking they are worshipping who? God. You see, the way he has always deceived, he comes presenting himself like an angel of light. He just changes himself. So he presents himself like a what? Like an angel of light. 
and then he can be accepted. Then he's adding and he's subtracting to the word. Right? He says, but they are worshipping him through a creed, a man-made denominations and creeds that's brought the people right down to the greatest deception that the world has ever known of. No matter how much the word of God promised for this day is preached and vindicated, they still won't believe it. They won't believe it. Right. He also uh, 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 continues on. I just wanted to jump it a little bit and make this comment. In, in, in the Old Testament, when God was moving with the children of Israel, he was God above us. That's Jehovah. In the New Testament, he was Emmanuel, God becoming flesh. He became God with us. That's what Emmanuel means. Ne? That's Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. But that's not the greater purpose. The greater purpose now was that God had to become God in us. You understand that? God had to become one with man. First, it's God above us. Then he becomes God with us. Then ultimately, he becomes God in us. But remember, last week, I think I, 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 I read for you Exodus chapter 25, where the Bible spoke about uh, Satan, uh, uh, rather, excuse me, uh, 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 the tabernacle that Moses was shown in heaven. And we said that the tabernacle had how many places? Three places, three compartments. And in these three places, we saw that I was giving you an example to say if we can liken these three places, we can say the outer court is the flesh, the inner court is the spirit, then the holy of holies is the soul. So God wants to dwell where? In the holy of holies. The throne of God must be in your soul. But Satan also wants to establish his throne in the soul of a man. So when we are talking about the throne of Satan today, don't just imagine a great seatway in hell. That one is not even important. We, we can try to describe, I don't even know it. You know, I don't, we can try to establish, to, to, to establish a picture of what it was maybe there in, in hell or how it is there in hell. But the greater picture, it's not so much about Satan in hell and his big throne and maybe his, you know, demons coming to him. I think last week I did mention to you that, you know, Satan also has got his demons just like God. You know, God has got... Uh, uh, you know, the 24 elders that stands before him. He's got uh, the cherubims or cherubims and seraphims that stands before him. We we're talking about the sixth, uh, we, we, uh, we said this, you know, saying that in the seventh dimension or in the sixth and seventh dimension, you are going to find the same similar setup that is also there in hell. You see, you also have got, uh, there are many things that we can see right there in heaven. You see, you've got, we said the four anointings. You remember those four anointings, the four living creatures. That, you remember that four living creatures, the, with the one with the face of a man, and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the cow, and the, what, the lion, and the eagle. You remember that. In all these things, Satan, he also have the very same kind of a setup as, as well, right in his, in his domain in hell. You see, so what happens, the ultimate goal is not for God, for, 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 for Satan to establish his throne in hell and it ends there. He wants to establish his throne in the heart of mankind. You understand? Remember we said in the Old Testament he was what? Jehovah, God above us. In the New Testament he became what? God with us, Emmanuel, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in the third exodus, or in the time that we are living in, in, the, in this end time dispensation, he has now become the Holy Ghost, which is now God in us. So he becomes enthroned in your soul. So the great target is always for the soul. That is why the prophet, he says that the soul has got either the sense of faith or of doubt. You see, if you've got faith, then that means God is enthroned in your soul. If you've got doubt, then that means the devil is enthroned where? In your soul. 
Do you see what is happening? That is why without faith it is impossible to please God. You see. Now, all these exciting things about uh, 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 hell and the things that are, are therein, they are all playing here on earth. The great influence is to try and deceive the people that are actually going to church, believers like you and me. You remember, Brother Branham, I think at one point he spoke about the vision of a mamba on the highway. You see, the devil had come all the way from those uh, 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 bushes, the grasslands and things like that. And then he had come away. He had come to the church on the highway. You see that? He was now on the highway. What was he trying to do? He was trying to kill a brother right there in church. He was trying to, to take the life out of the church. You see that? That is the ultimate goal that our enemy has got. So it's a choice that a believer makes to say, who do you want to be enthroned in your soul? And the one who is enthroned in your soul, who's on the throne of your soul, he's the one that controls you. He's the one that influences you. The life that you live, the things you speak about, where you spend your time, the way you communicate, everything about you. You must know there is somebody operating in the throne of your soul. It's either God or the devil. Do you understand what is happening? The angels that were cast out of heaven with the devil, the third that I spoke about, the third of those angels, they were taken to hell. But what do they do? They are the demons which come to influence the people. But one day, uh, we'll go a little bit deeper on that because we'll explain to you about the attributes of God and the attributes of the devil that were deceived there in, he- uh, there in heaven and they came here on earth and you are now believers and you also have got unbelievers. But one day we'll speak about it in a different way. Here we're just showing you a picture. I think we don't have any more questions. We perfectly understand that the third uh, region in the fifth dimension is the region of what? The throne of Satan. Does anybody have a question before we close? Everyone is okay. I like it when people, they understand. That means no one has got a question. God bless you. So we are going to start, uh, the next uh, uh, lesson is going to start on the sixth dimension. And then I think we will try not to take long on it. We we'll try not to take long. And I think we've been speaking about dimensions for months now. I don't know how long, but I think it has been months. So we we'll try not to take long on it. Uh, let's stand up on our feet. We are going to close with a word of prayer. God richly bless you. Thank you so much for attending uh, the service today. And we'll meet again the next service. Uh, God willing. God richly bless you. Uh, who can close for us with a word of prayer? Yes, brother, you can close for us with a word of prayer.